you know, you can you can hire a, a manager. You know, you can you can hire, but but in the, they they may be going through motions, making their um, you know, making the atmosphere look like a nice temple or something, but the the devotional uh, substance is lacking. So here we're talking about the distinction between form and substance. So it's it's important it's important to to um, to acknowledge the need for there to be genuine pure devotional substance in the kirtan in order for the kirtan to actually be successful. If the kirtan is lacking genuine pure devotional substance, that means that the kirtan should be dominated by pure devotees. And pure devotees means who chants Shudanam. Those who are chanting Nama Bas are not pure devotees yet, even though they may be on the threshold of pure devotion as neophyte devotees in our movement, on the clearing stage or whatever. And that's that's also good in on one level, but it's not it's not going to do what uh, the Sankirtan performances are actually intended to do. You know, it's one thing, Chaito Darpana Marginam, it's one thing, Chaito Darpana Marginam, to a certain extent, you know, but it's another thing to, to actually inculcate Bhakti Shakti or, or plant the seed of Prema into the heart of you know, another living entity. You know, so that that means that, you know, people have to be pure. Therefore, following the four regulative principles, chanting a min minimum, you know, f f at least for the devotees in our movement, under Srila Prabhupada's auspices, chanting a minimum of 16 rounds daily. You know, then we can we can hope to be gradually gaining, you know, purity, devotional momentum. That's required. If we're if if we're not uh, on that platform, then we're not chanting the name. Some people complain about changing the tune too often. Some people complain about not changing the tune enough. But if one is chanting Shudanam then it doesn't matter how many times he changes or how many times he doesn't change. Whoever's hearing that chanting of Shudanam is getting something substantial. But if someone's not chanting Shudanam, is chanting either, you know, the Chaya Namabas or Pratibimba Namabas, which is the offended name, then, then no matter how you cut it, you can change the tune as many times as you like, or as you, you can you can not change the tune as many times as you like. You know, and but it doesn't matter how many times. It doesn't matter how supposedly devotional an atmosphere you generate by having a nice violin or having a nice flute or having a nice saxophone. You know, or having a, having having a nice jam bass you know, to completely obliterate the beauty of the sound of the madunga, or having nice bass guitars, or having nice heavy metal. Why not have heavy metal? Some people like that, you know. And some people might even think that that's quite devotional enough for them. It doesn't matter, you know, what, how you embellish it. If you have, you know, nice cartel playing, nice madunga playing, nice, um, um, you know, ch changes in, in the rhythmic patterns, changing up. If you do it correctly or you do it incorrectly, you know, it doesn't really matter all, all that much. Because if you're not chanting Shudanam, even if you change up correctly, then, you know, and the form of the kirtan may look together about itself. But the, uh, but the substance is lacking. So, 
ultimately the bottom line is more important than anything which has anything to do with form. How the kirtan looks, whether we're wearing one red sock and one blue sock, or whether we got some spiffy saffron socks on, you know, with our spiffy, you know, little gold buttons on our quarter or whatever. No matter how you cut it, if you're not chanting Shudanam, you're not doing real kirtan. So then, it seems to me, some emphasis should be given, or some stress laid on whether or not the individuals involved are doing their level, level best to convince Shudanam to appear in their heart and dance on their tongues. Otherwise, anyone can chant the, the syllables Namakshara Nama Nahi. We say, you know, Hari Nam, Hari Nam, but is it Hari Nam or is it Namakshara? Just an alphabetical configuration of a syllabic sound vibration, but Prabhupada is told that a sinful person, someone who's not following the regulative principles, that such, such a person cannot chant the holy name. And even someone's following the regulative principles, but if he's not actually chanting Shudanam, he's not chanting the holy name, which is non-different from Krishna. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, that only a Mahabhagwat has the fitness to bestow the pure name which is identical with Krishna. So then we have to ask our question that are we actually coming to the standard which is required to practically act as viable instruments in the hands of the predecessor Acharyas, as viable representatives of Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement? Or are we just satisfying ourselves that our, our quasi-Krishna conscious, you know, so-called kirtan, or a bas nam kirtan, is good enough, you know, for conditioned souls like us? So really, you know, before we enter into any discussion concerning, you know, how to generate a you know, a um, form of the kirtan, which is um, in some way or another more acceptable or more, um, let's say, together about itself. How to change up properly, how to play the card tolls, whether the card tolls, because Prabhupada did give some instructions concerning the volume of the different instruments, you know, in, in relationship to the to the, the uh, singing, the chanting. He did give such things. But, uh, but before we entered into that, you know, we should actually try to understand what we're doing, what we're trying to accomplish. By performing Sankirtan Jagya, what we're trying to accomplish is we're trying our best to propagate love of Godhead. Krishna Prima. You can't give it if you don't have it. So if we want to be instrumental in propagating Lord Chaitanya's Prema Nam Sankirtan, then we have to come to the platform of Prema. Or at least we have to be pursuing Prema Dharma as per Anukulena Krishnano Shilanam, which is, you can say, the green mango. The means and the end is the same. The endeavor has to be to please Krishna, to do what is favorable in the matter of cultivating pure, unalloyed devotional spirit. And if we're not uh, making that endeavor to cultivate according to Sambandha Tattva Gyan, Abhideya Tattva Gyan, and Prayoja Tattva Gyan, if we're not properly uh, aligned with the Siddhanta of the Gaudiya Sampradaya and we're just, you know, getting our yayas out, the mamas and papas, you know, come together to have a hoedown on the plea of having a kirtan, 
keeping Krishna in front. I don't want to second guess people's sincerity, but you know the fact of the matter is is that we have to consider whether or not we're actually seriously cultivating pure devotional principles. If we're not seriously cultivating pure devotional principles, anukulina krishna shilanam, anyabilasita shunyam, shunyam means zero. No ulterior motives, not for name, not for fame, not for making money or keeping our grihasta, you know, or these days any kind of ashram together, you know, by doing kirtan for money, getting, you know, a cut of the tuition, you know, the, the, the what is it called, the, um, you know, the ticket, you know, so th these, these, these are not at all Shuddha Bhakti, it's hardly a semblance, it's a fended name, actually. So if we want to actually become instruments in the hands of the predecessor Acharya, and successfully perform Sankirtan to assist Lord Chaitanya's mission of propagating the Holy Name, then we have to propagate the Holy Name. It's not enough to propagate the semblance of the Name, because that semblance of the Name is not the Holy Name. You can say it's the Tejas of Nam, but it's not Rasu Vaisaha. Rasovaisaha is Shudanam, who is identical with Krishna, Nami, who is Rasovaisaha, Akila Rasamrita Sindhumoti. Then that sound vibration is Shabda Brahman. The other offended name is not Shabda Brahman at all. It is, as Prabhupada himself said, wrote in one essay, he says that it is mundane mayak sound vibration, even though it's having the syllables in the name, appearing like the name. Bhakti Siddhanta gives another example of Ravana catching, abduct, abducting Sita. Ravana's abducting Sita. Um, did he get Sita? No, he didn't get Sita. Sita slipped behind the veil of Yoga Maya and presented a mayak form of Sita. So in the same way, Shudanam slips behind the curtain of Yoga Maya and presents a Mayak form of Nam to those who are offenders against the name or those who are sinful. A sinful person at best can inadvertently chant uh, the shadow representation, shadow semblance, Chaya Namapa. And that, you know, will help him to become free from sinful reactions. But without chanting Shudanam, or without associating with devotees who are chanting Shudanam, there's no question of bhakti being ignited within the heart. Prema, or prema bhakti, is like, is like the fire dormant in the wood. The example is given that the fire is already there, dormant in the wood, but it takes association with another fire to bring out that fire. Therefore, Shravanadi Shudachiti Koriye Udoya. It is awakened by hearing pure name, Shravanadi, first hearing from the lips of a pure devotee. Shravanadi Shudachiti. Shravanadi means hearing and then chanting, remembering, etc. Koriye Udoya. It is awakened. But you can hardly expect to ignite the fire of Prema Bhakti if you continue to pour the water of material sense gratification and mundane conceptions, material conceptions, about the, the proper progress of the Sankirtan movement on the wood of the heart. If we don't dry out the wood by fasting, from material pursuits, then 
uh, then you can hardly expect the wood of the heart to manifest the, uh, the natural fire of love of Krishna, which is dormant in every living entity. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema, Sadhya Kabbalnoi, comes from nowhere else, comes from your heart. Your love is your affair with Krishna, your consciousness, your attraction, your feelings toward Krishna. But by, by proper association, it's possible for that love to be, let's say, brought out, enhanced, brought about, you could say. So extremely important that if we want to actually perform Sankirtan, then we have to become pure. That means pure intention. And pure intention means that you at least have to have a, a mango seed. The mango seed sprouting into a mango, uh, uh, let's say, creeper or tree, as it were, and producing mango leaves and mango flowers and mango fruits, beginning with green mango fruit. If you don't have a mango seed, then how are you going to get a green mango fruit? If you don't have a green mango fruit, then how are you going to get a ripe mango fruit? So the prema fall has to be based on the prema beach. And what is the prema beach? It is Shuddha Bhakti Lata Beach. Shuddha, Shuddha Bhakti Lata Beach means very simply Shraddha, Shabde, Vishvas. Having heard Shraddha, Shabde, Shabde means Shabda Brahman. Having heard from the lips of a pure devotee in disciplic succession the proper conception of what is genuine spirituality, what is real pure devotional uh, understanding, ideal. When you've heard that, then Shravanadi, what is that? Shraddha Shabde Vishvas. Vishvas means that there's high regard, or you can say uh, high estimation of the subject matter which is heard through disciplic succession. On that basis, Shraddha, Shabde, Vishvas, Sudridha. Dridha means very determined. And Sudridha means highly, you know, very good determination, very good, strong determination. Nischoya. Nischoya means decision. On the basis of having heard about the pure devotional ideal and the results of gain, of, of applying the pure devotional principles in one's life, meaning the attainment of prema bhakti and the attainment ultimately of going back home back to Godhead, which can only be achieved going to Golok Dham, entering into the Brajalila can only be achieved if one is cultivating the unalloyed devotional principles. So after having heard and when one sees something wonderful in that subject matter, which he has heard from the lips of the pure devotees, and develops a high regard, such a regard that he makes a firmly determined decision about what? Krishna bhakti koile sarva karma krita hoy. Krishna bhakti only. And Krishna bhakti means shuddha bhakti, it doesn't mean mishra bhakti. Krishna bhakti koile sarva karma krita hoy. That there's no need to do any other karmas. Sarva karma prityaja, sarva dharma prityaja, mam ekam, one thing, only one thing. What is that one thing? In Kali Yuga, who is mam in Kali Yuga? Nam. Mam means nam. Kali, Kali, nama rupe, Krishna avatar. Krishna avatar in Kali Yuga means nam. So sarva dharma prityaja, nam ekam sharanam raja. That is the actual meaning in Kali Yuga. And it, it's very important for devotees to understand that if they want to be genuine kirtanias. All other dharmas, all other karmas, only one karma, Krishna Bhakti. And in Kali Yuga, Krishna Bhakti primarily means Sankirtan Jagya. 
And Sankirtan Jogya means Shudanam Sankirtan Jogya. Before we attain the Shudanam platform, naturally we're chanting Nama Bas, trying to clear away you know, anartas and whatnot. But we have to focus on the sarup of Uttama Bhakti. The sarup of Uttama Bhakti, that means Artha Pravriti. Not only Anartha Nivriti. By only focusing on Anartha Nivriti and chanting Nama Bas to do Anartha Nivriti, you will never come to the perfectional stage. Artha Pravriti is more important. And as you become more focused on Artha Pravriti, which means uh, Anukulina Krishnano Shilanam, that is the Sarup Lakshana of, of, of Shuddha Bhakti denoted by Kirtan, particularly in Kali Yuga, Sankirtan, then, uh, then you can hope to get something standard, something real, out, out of the affair. So it's essential that, that the devotees become well acquainted with what is required for actually performing Sankirtan in a, in a real way so that we can become fully uh, qualified spiritual masters, fully qualified instruments. Before you can become fully qualified spiritual master, you have to become a fully accomplished disciple. Disciple means discipline. Without becoming a, a properly disciplined disciple, according to pure devotional principles, there's no question of having a green mango. There's no question of, of having the ripe mango at long last. of this it can be edited you know so as to let's say streamline the message to some extent but we don't want to lose the the actual import of the discussion yeah I think it's good it's, it's it wasn't what I was expecting no but this, this I mean I have to speak my heart yeah, because um because when I saw the questions, list of questions, mm. you know, I wasn't feeling actually satisfied that we're touching on the, the, the essence of, of what we're trying to accomplish as, as uh, Sankirtan devotees mm. in Lord Chaitanya's Sankirtan movement. So it's necessary to at least bring a little focus, you know, on this point of discussion. Yeah, there's two there's two types of ruchi described in in um, Madhurya Kadambini also. And a little discussion could be about that because Bhaktivinoda Thakur in Jaiva Dharma says that one is chanting Shudanam when one can understand that he's chanting Shudanam when one has profound ruchi for pure devotional practices. But then there's a discussion in Madhurya Kadambini about two types of ruchi, two levels of ruchi. One is ruchi which is uh, dependent on accoutrements and the other is ruchi which is not dependent on accoutrements. 
when we say accoutrements, it means more or less paraphernalia. Uh, just like in the deity worship, he gives the example, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives the example that someone may ha uh, have an interest in worshiping the deity or get some, you know, taste out of worshiping the deity if the deity has all first class nice silver paraphernalia and everything, the dresses and everything are first class. But he may not be so much interested in going to worship the deity if it's just, you know, some crunky old brass paraphernalia or something, you know, and maybe the dresses aren't so nice. So here's Krishna standing on the altar checking you out. You know, what kind of, you know, devotion, devotional attitude do you have? Do you want to worship me or do you want to worship my paraphernalia? Do you want Krishna or do you want Krishna's armies? You know, what are you really after? So that kind of ruchi, which is dependent on nice madunga plain or nice rod alankars, means ornaments. You know, if the, if the rod alankar is executing, executed properly, meticulously, then it's pleasant to hear. Just like professional reciters of Bhagavatam, they have, you know, a knack for embellishing in a very poetic style which keeps the money coming in, basically. Because people are enchanted by his way of presenting the thing because it is, you know, nicely ornamented, poetic ornamentation or whatever. So, you know, similarly with kirtan, if the kartals and the mridanga and the harmonium and nice violins and, you know, flutes and what have you, you know, don't forget the saxophones. If all these things are, you know, nicely presented, then we enjoy, enjoy, you know, participating in the kirtan. But the question is, who is supposed to be the enjoyer? You know, is it that we're supposed to be enjoying the kirtan? Because it's nicely conducted with proper breakdown and proper, um, you know, intonation and all the things which make for nice music to be enjoyed by either those who hear the kirtan or those who are participating in the kirtan, enjoying performing kirtan. But are we the enjoyer? And even on the higher platform of Ruchi, if there's still traces of that Purusha Adiman, that enjoying spirit, we may not be, in, you know, depend, our, our enjoyment of the kirtan may not be necessarily dependent on, you know, the, the accoutrements or the paraphernalia surrounding Krishna, but we may have an attitude of enjoying Krishna, which is kind of like Kubja's mentality, enjoying Krishna. But are we the enjoyer? Or is Krishna the enjoyer. When we say who's the enjoyer, it's like who uh, that's that's a similar question is is who is our audience? Is our audience the people in the public who are listening to the kirtan and we're trying to impress them in some way or another? You know, that may be part and parcel of the package that we're offering to Krishna for his pleasure. But we should always remember that it's Krishna who is the audience of our kirtan performance, which should include the public as well. We're trying to bring the public on board by inspiring them to come forward, and perhaps they are not on the highest platform of ruchi, so therefore we do, try to do it nicely in order to inspire them, encourage them to come forward and, and participate in the kirtan or listen to the kirtan as part of the complete whole offering at the lotus feet of Krishna. 
keeping Krishna's audience in mind. You know, so it may not be the best thing under certain circumstances to just, uh, it's just like Prabhupada instructed that in Mayapur, he said, why are we building this Rajasic building? You know, because who would come to see Bhaktivedanta Swami living under a tree? So therefore we're building a, you know, a huge temple of understanding or whatever, this Adbhut Mandir and all these things, you know, big, big Rajasic practically, you know, and everything nice, nice Disneyland to get people's attention is called candy coating the pill, so to speak, candy coating the medicine. But the medicine has to be there. If the medicine's not there, then all our candy coating or whatever, we may enjoy tasting the ornamentation, the, the raga lankars or the nice bradunga beets or the whatever it may be. But, um, you know, is Krishna enjoying? Krishna doesn't need our putrams and push pumps. He doesn't need our fancy breakdown. He doesn't need our fancy Madunga plane. He doesn't need our, you know, just so-so contemplative, you know, slow meditative kirtan or whatever. And he doesn't need our fast, 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 you know, runaway train, you know, supposedly fired up kirtan. Is it really fired up or is it passionate? Or maybe we give everyone the benefit of the doubt that it's enthusiastic, okay? So at least it's enthusiastic. But enthusiastic for what? Is, what is our enthusiasm directed toward? What is our enthusiasm based on? So we may be enthusiastic, but maybe it's just because we get a rush out of whamming the car tolls as loud as we possibly can, or hitting the gong as loud as we possibly can, or hitting the redung as loud as we can, because after all, you know, you can play an instrument as loud as possible. It's possible, but whether that's what should be done is another thing. If it gives pleasure to Krishna to play the instrument as loud as possible, then go for it. But, you know, if Krishna would prefer something done tastefully for his sense gratification, then maybe that's a higher consideration of, uh, a higher consideration than both the lower form of ruchi, which is a consideration of our taste, or the higher form of ruchi, which is also a consideration of our taste. Of course, if our taste is based on Krishna's taste, then that's the highest form of ruchi, but then we're entering into something which is called asakti. And then there's bhav. And prema, which is Krishna, indriya, priti, ichta, the desire to satisfy the senses of Krishna. Then we see that, that uh, it's not a question of whether or not there are, you know, fanciful accoutrements, embellishments, ornamentation, etc. It's a question of whether Krishna's pleased. And if Krishna's pleased by the complexities of the Madunga patterns done for his pleasure, because after all, if the element of bhakti is not there, then Krishna doesn't have to accept, just like he didn't have to place his glance on Duryodhan's, you know, elaborately presented feast. He preferred to go to the house of Vikura. No, not, I mean, excuse me, the house of Vidura. Vidura. And even Vidura was, according to regulative principles, making a very nice feast for him, best he could. But what was a what was Vidura's wife doing, Vidurani? She was there overwhelmed with ecstasy that Krishna had come to her house, so much so that she was peeling the bananas and offering the bananas to Krishna, the banana peels to Krishna and throwing away the bananas. And Krishna was taking the banana peels, and mind you, there was not a single tosi leaf on any of those banana peels, but he was accepting the offering because it was with bhav from the heart. So there's another, you know, realm of consideration involved. However, we cannot think 
that Vidurani's Bhav was more elevated. She was offering out of ecstasy, offering the banana peels to Krishna, totally mind, you know, unmindful of what she was doing. She was just in ecstasy. And sometimes that happens also in relationship to the gopis. But we can hardly expect that Vidurani's devotional bhav was more elevated than the gopis. Sometimes the gopis go running in the dead of night, you know, just because they're so overwhelmed with the desire to meet Krishna for his satisfaction that they forget to put on one earring, and one you know, ankle bracelet is off, the upper part of the body, I mean, upper part of the cloth is on the lower part of the body, and the lower lower cloth is on the upper part of the body, and there's there's you know, uh, lack you know on her eyebrow, and there's cudgel you know on her on her um, you know feet or whatever. It may be totally topsy turvy. Sometimes that happens, but when they commence the performance of Rasa Lila, and you can. Read about it if you're daring enough to read Govinda Lilamrita. There's a whole, there's two chapters concerning the performance of Rasa Lila. And it is stated, I could quote it from the Shastra, but I'll paraphrase it best I can without, ha without referring to it and reading it. Uh, Kaviraj Goswami says that whatever musical embellishments and means rhythmic playing of the of the different types of drums and there were different varieties of drums being played and kartals and ver the various musical instruments as well as whatever types of singing because they have what are called quarter tone the, these microtones at which are, according to Srimati Radharani, she says in Chamakara Chandrika, she's um, addressing Krishna who's disguised as a female singer who has come to somehow break, endeavor to break her man. But uh, she says that, that um, these microtones cannot be intonated by human beings in this world but they're they're intonated by the residents of the heavenly planets and also in Vaikuntha and also in Braja Golok the gopis are quite proficient at these uh, very subtle modulations in order to bring out rasa, in order to give expression to their, you know, aprakrita bhav, totally transcendental spiritual. And but, so, Kaviraj Goswami, at the end of the Rasa Lila performances, he describes that whatever, whatever complexity of musical embellishment is done by Lord Brahma on the highest material planetary system, Brahmalok. And the residents of Brahmalok, the residents of Swargalok, the residents of Brahmalok, you know, all the way up to the residents in the heavenly planets and all the way up to Brahmalok and beyond whatever complexity Lakshmi Narayan and their associates perform in their musical. Um, let's say relishment in the Vaikuntha planets and more beyond that uh, uh, the gopis and Krishna were uh, performing or engaging you can say these various embellishments and complexities extremely complex musical embellishments. So it's not that there's no place for complexity. There's not, pla there's not that there's no place for doing
things nicely for the pleasure of Krishna. It's the question of the attitude. It's not what we do. It's the attitude or the consciousness behind what we do. This, the, you can say, the important consideration. We're not, you know, actually against complexity. If someone can play the Madunga in a very com com complex and very tasteful way for the pleasure of Krishna, then I say more power to him. He's closer to where the gopis are at. But if he's playing tastefully and complex for his own sense gratification, it's just like in my book I make a point that if a Madunga is usurped for the purpose of, of enhancing cinema songs, then is it a Madunga? This, it may sound like a Madunga, it may be played artfully like, like a Madunga would be played if the Madunga were to be played artfully, but is it actually a Madunga? It's a Madunga in name only. Because a Madunga is a Madunga when the Madunga is used for glorifying the holy name of the Lord or glorifying Krishna, either Nam, Rup, Kuno, and Lila. Then it's actually functioning as a Madunga. Otherwise it's Madunga Abbas or it's an offended Madunga or whatever it may be. But it's not actually a Madunga because it's not serving as a Madunga. Just like Prabhupada has many times made the point that Kirtan means Kirtan of Krishna's holy names. Sometimes they say Durga Kirtan or this Kirtan or that Kirtan, but Kirtan, that's not Kirtan, real Kirtan. Kirtan means the names of Vishnu, Vishnu Tattvadidis, Kirtan, of the names of Krishna. Then that's real Kirtan. They can play the different musical instruments, you know, for, for Durga, so-called Kirtan, but, uh, but that, that is not the real form of the musical instruments, ultimately. The real form is the, is the form of the mus musical instruments that are played in the spiritual world. There is Murdunga in the spiritual world. There is Kartal in the spiritual world. And one time Srila Prabhupada was asked, mind you, when he was asked what kind of instruments are there in the spiritual world. Prabhupada said that there's, well, there's Madunga, there's Kartal, and there's a little harmonium. He said there's a little harmonium. As if he imported the harmonium that he was fond of playing. He liked to play harmonium. And he was very good at playing the harmonium. So, if no one else had done it before him, Srila Prabhupada expressed in such a way as to indicate that he you know, imported a little harmonium to the spiritual world. A little, not too much. A little more. Let's say more redundant cartons. So anyway, it's, an, it's, it's important to understand that, um, that it's not just a, a matter of doing things simple. On one level, we keep the kirtan simple so as to bring less evolved, uh, musically evolved, devotees on board so that they feel that they can follow easily follow the tunes or whatever. But there is a place for complexity also. However, as far as artfully doing something, it's just like, why does Krishna create this material world? One of the main reasons why he creates the material world, because after all, he's a, a, a sportive personality, so he enjoys, as described in Jaiva Dharma, he enjoys seeing the beauty 
The enhanced beauty of his golden compassionate nature against the black background contrasted against the black background of this material world. So there is such a thing as contrast. Contrast even in the spiritual, even in the eyes of Krishna, the idea of contrast for enhancing the beauty of something is there. He is a, a witty connoisseur. So he appreciates contrast also. So complexity against simplicity. If you have if you have something which is totally you know, you know, like, you know, giving me a, a headache, there's so much complexity that it's hard to to hang on to it all, and it's hard to appreciate any of it. But if if there's some simple rhythmic pattern and then suddenly the Brunanga player cuts into something which is extremely complex and you know he gets a chance to show his stuff to Krishna for Krishna's pleasure. Not to show his stuff to the girls. Please. You know. Some quote unquote devotees are kinda like that. They uh they're more like yowling cats bewailing the want of their mates, as I say in my new and upcoming book. You know, you've heard the, the cats in the heat. You know, that's the kind of kirtan that some people do, showing off to the girls and whatever. Not like that. But doing something nicely for the pleasure of Krishna, you know, that goes beyond the consideration of these two, you know, the lower and the higher form of ruchi, to the consideration of prema, Krishna indriya priti ischa, having the desire to give pleasure to, you know, Krishna, to the senses of Krishna. You know, Radharani makes, you know, uh, milk sweets, but she never makes the same milk sweet twice. There's always some nuance for Krishna to pick up on and appreciate. The same with her love making, the same with, you know, her dressing, the same, the same, the, she's, she's multi-variety of expressions of herself for the pleasure of Krishna. That is her prema. That's the mark of her prema. It's not, you know, bland, namby-pamby, watered down to the point where it's hardly any longer kirtan. So there is, there's room for spice, but we're spicing it for Krishna's pleasure. We're not spicing it so that we can, you know, get some kind of a rush out of, you know, putting some chili on our tongue. That may be there, you know, in the consideration of one type of ruchi or another. But, you know, when you th think about Krishna's pleasure, how to do it for Krishna's pleasure. And the main ingredient in the matter of Krishna's pleasure is the heart to sing from the heart, to sing out of a desperation for somehow or other getting Krishna's favorable glance upon us, his merciful glance upon us. Somehow or other, if we can accomplish that by our performance of Sankirtan, then we've done the real thing. Why Sankirtan? Why not just one little babe's in the woods somewhere, crying alone in the wilderness. Why coming together and cooperating, giving up our egocentricity enough to cooperate with each other, to produce a louder voice, to get Krishna's attention. We're calling out as loud as possible. Kirtan means 
you know, Ut Kirtana, Krishnot Kirtana Gan uh, uh, Gan This this prayer to the six Goswamis, Krishna Ut Kirtana. Ut means above. It has a couple of different meanings. Above means loudly, above the din of this material materialistic rat race society means loudly chanting above the the din of our disturbed minds etc to chant loudly so that we can uh, let's say bring the holy name into the purview of our as if we could bring but by his grace if he so desires to appear and dance on our tongue. Not that we're chanting, but that he's dancing, using our tongue as the instrument for his divine, you know, sound incarnation into this atmosphere, loudly, for the benefit of others, but also loudly, <laughs> so, so loud that we can hope to be heard in Golok Dham, to call him Golok Eta Prema Dham, Arina, just like Advaita Acharya was loudly calling out for the appearance of Lord Chaitanya. Loudly calling out. You know, so that kind of loudly, Utkirtan. But Ut also means, just like Uttama, it means transcendental. Transcendental Kirtan. It means it must be Shudana. Krishnot Kirtana means that, they, that, they, that the six Goswami is engaged in transcendental kirtan, not just loudly, but transcendental, supramundane, spiritual sound vibration, shudanam, shudanam kirtan. Then another meaning of ut is with raised up arms. Utkirtan means chanting and dancing with arms raised. When the arms are raised in the performances of loud Sankirtan of the Holy Name, then all the residents of the heavenly planets are also benefited. And when we're dancing with our feet on the ground, the earth planet and all the residents of the lower planetary systems are also benefited. So to benefit everyone, this therefore, of course, we're sitting and doing kirtan here in the um, in the, the Krishna Balaram Mandir, but there are devotees who are also dancing and chanting. It's just like some of the gopis will be sitting and doing the musical accompaniment to the Rasa Lila. Other gopis are dancing and some gopis are sitting and playing the musical instruments and singing like that. So in that mood, we're chanting, you know, sitting you know, before Radharani and Krishna or Krishna Balaram and, and Gornitai and we're um, chanting and uh, helping to, or at least trying to help to inspire uh, the enthusiasm. And you see practically how we get the public to dance and chant, you know, with us. And the devotees also become inspired to, to dance and chant. Sankirtan is like Rasalila. Our, our Nam Japa is like inviting Radha and Krishna, Radha Krishna Nam, into our private kunj to accept our intimate sevas. But it is Nam Sankirtan which inspires Radha and Krishna when they see our, our, um, our uh, non-egocentric, let's say, cooperative, para-upakara spirit 
to do good for others. Para upakara spirit. When, we, when, they, when they see that, then they become inspired to reveal themselves intimately in the, in the kunja in ways that we, we perhaps would never, you know,